Hi, I'm Cliff Hildreth from the Hildreth Group, and I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch my video. You know, if you ask the average agent what they think the most important part of their job is, you'll most likely get some version of helping to find the right home for you. Or, if you're a seller, it might be to sell your home quickly and at the highest price possible. And obviously these things are important to the process, and any good agent can do both as long as they're diligent and market your home properly if you're a seller. But I think a little differently about my job. Although I'm committed to helping you find the perfect home or sell your home at the highest price available, like other agents, I don't think getting you into a contract is the most important part of my job. I consider the most important part of my job protecting your interest after we get into the process. And having said that, I'd like to talk to you today about something very important that is happening frequently in real estate today, wire fraud. Wire fraud in real estate is one of the fastest growing cyber crimes in the country. The FBI reportedly received 301,000 complaints in 2017 and losses exceeded 1.4 billion. The problem has been around for a couple of years now, but rather than diminishing, it seems to be occurring with greater frequency. Here's how it works. Criminals have developed viruses that hack into email accounts of buyers, sellers, real estate agents, and escrow companies. The malware records login information and then sits undetectable by commercial antivirus software. When an email is sent or received that mentions a wire transfer, the virus alerts the criminals who then use the hacked information to gain access to the email account. The hacker can then gain access to the entire network of participants involved in the transaction. Now his entry point may be through your email account, one of the real estate agent's accounts, escrow, or any one of a number of affiliated services such as title or home warranty, all without the victim being aware that anything is wrong. The hacker will monitor the transaction, learning all the names, phone numbers, and financial information involved. Then, at some point, usually near the end of closing, the hacker will send an email, most likely posing as the escrow company or officer, issuing false instructions as to where the down payment funds are to be wired. And too often, sadly, the people who receive the fraudulent instructions will comply. I really want to stress this point. This is not like the typical credit card fraud where most banks will reimburse you if someone gets your card and uses it. Banks are rarely held responsible for a wire authorized by the customer, that would be you, even if the customer was tricked into sending it. And if the funds are sent overseas, there's little U.S. law enforcement can do to recover it. Out of the $1.4 billion of fraud I mentioned in 2017, the FBI recovered only $14 million. That's equal to just 1% of the losses. Everyone else is just out of luck. In most cases of wire fraud, you'll probably lose the funds permanently. Now, before panic sets in, I've got a few tips to avoid being scammed. Number one, obtain the phone number of the escrow officer at the beginning of the transaction and confirm it with your realtor. Number two, do not ever wire funds prior to calling your escrow officer or realtor to confirm wire instructions and only use the phone number you were provided previously. Three, orally confirm the wire transfer instructions is legitimate and confirm the bank routing number, account numbers, and other codes before taking steps to transfer the funds. Number four, Avoid sending personal information like social security numbers or bank account numbers in emails or text. Provide such information in person or over the telephone directly to the escrow officer. Number five, take steps to secure the system you're using with your email account. These steps include things like creating strong passwords or changing them from time to time, using secure Wi-Fi and not using free services if possible. Gmail, Hotmail, and Yahoo Mail are the easiest for hackers to penetrate. It's worth noting that these steps don't lean heavily on technological solutions. In other words, you don't have to be a computer whiz to protect yourself. This is a good thing. In a day when hackers can get into the accounts of Target, Sony, even Mark Zuckerberg, the CEO of Facebook, to name only a few, and they have some of the best internet security in the world, so it's probably unrealistic to think that we should rely on our consumer antivirus software to find everything. I really want to put a lot of emphasis on number one, getting the right phone number from the outset and then not to be persuaded to switch to another one. Some of the more sophisticated scam operations actually have call centers set up at the fake phone number. 
So that if one calls for verification, they'll receive an assurance that all is well. The bottom line is, a legitimate real estate agent, broker, or escrow company will rarely send an email changing the way a payment is made. Also, they would never put the entire bank account number in an email, for obvious reasons that I just stated. Even when sending legitimate wiring instructions, an escrow company will generally leave out a few digits of the bank account number and instruct your banker to call for the final numbers when you're sitting there making the transfer. If you have an escrow or closing transaction with us and you receive an email containing wire transfer instructions, do not respond to the email. Instead, call us or your escrow officer immediately using previously known contact information and not what's provided in the email to verify the information prior to sending the funds. It is so important to pay attention to the points I've made. Ultimately, it's your money and if you don't catch it, you may send tens of thousands or in some cases hundreds of thousands of dollars to a hacker somewhere on the net. And if you do, it's likely gone with no way to retrieve it. Now, having said that, I hate making a video that sounds so gloomy, but as I mentioned at the outset, my job is to protect your interest and give you all the information you need to successfully complete your real estate transaction, not just the good stuff. There is some good news, however, in that the five steps I laid out in this video don't require any great level of technological prowess, as I mentioned before. A little extra attention and a verification phone call may be all that's needed to keep you from losing your dream home, your life savings, or both. Now, as always, if you have any questions or just want to talk about the real estate market, even if you're not ready to buy or sell right now, please don't hesitate to give me a call or shoot me an email or text at the information below. I'm always happy to help in any way that I can. Now, remember, together we can make it happen.